I'm gonna show you how to make this. Let's dive into it. Nothing makes VFX look cheaper than a bad screen replace. All right, so we're gonna take screen replacing to another level and we're gonna add some 3D depth to it and some AI tools along with After Effects as usual. Let's get started. All right, so I have my clip in After Effects here. It's a green screen, guy holding a green screen with some crosshairs on the screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna motion track this using Mocha. So with my clip selected, I'm gonna go to Animation, Track in Boris FX Mocha. And up here, I'll click on the Mocha icon and that's gonna open up Mocha. And up here, I'm gonna click on the Create X-Spline tool. And I'm tempted to just click on the crosshairs here. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually just gonna select the whole entire phone itself. And in Track Motion Options here, I'm gonna click on the Perspective button, enable that. And from here, I'm just gonna hit the Track Forward button. I'll speed this up for you guys. Okay, so when that's done, I see my track looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save up here and I'm just gonna close out of Mocha. If I drop down the tracking data and I could click on create track data and this is gonna add the data within the effect controls. But for now, since I don't have my object that I wanna track, I'm gonna put a pin in that and I'm gonna jump over to mid journey. All right, so I'm in mid journey and I'm gonna go ahead and paste my prompt and I'm gonna to try to create my monster here. And after a few generations, here are some results that it came up with. I'm gonna go ahead and use this guy. So I'm gonna download this. You see it kind of cuts his hands off a little bit, but that's easy to fix in Photoshop. So I'll jump over to Photoshop with my image imported. All right, so I have my image here in Photoshop and I'm just gonna hit the C key and that's gonna bring up my cropping options. And up here in fill, I'm gonna change this to generative expand. And I'm just gonna move my guy back to the center here. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so we kind of see the edges of them. And I'll hit enter and this is gonna generate. Okay, you see this worked on this one. So I'm just going to do the same thing make it even bigger. All right, so after a couple different generations, here's my fluffy subject against my phone here. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is make my background green. So when I bring it into my image to video generator, I could actually key out that later on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to layer, merge visible. Now we'll go to select and mask, and I'm gonna click on select subject. It does a pretty good job selecting them. If I just look at the color transparency, you see it doesn't pick up some of his hair here, so I'm just gonna manually select that. And that looks pretty good. If I wanna actually refine some of his hair, I can click on this refine hair, and you see it does some subtle changes to his little fur there that can actually help get a little more of the fluffiness to be selected. So I'm gonna go to Output 2 Selection, and I'm gonna click OK, and I'm just gonna make sure that this is selected as well, because I'll basically want everything inside the phone to remain and my outside to be deleted. So I'm gonna click on Select Inverse, and I'm gonna hit Delete. So now my subject is against a nice alpha channel. So I'll create a new layer underneath my subject. I'm gonna go to my Paint Bucket tool, and I'll just paint the background. All right, so from here, I could just export this as a JPEG. All right, so now I'm gonna go to my image to video tool. I'm gonna use Runway for this one, but if you have Halo O or Kling, you could use those as well, or whatever you decide to use. It's basically just animating the image and making it come to life. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload that green screen video. And I'm gonna paste my prompt here and make sure this is nine by 16 and I'll click generate. And after a few generations, here are some of the examples. And obviously I can go further with that, but I'm just gonna use that and I'll go ahead and make sure that's 4K, which I've done already. And I'm gonna click download. And now I can bring that into After Effects. My main comp, I have my little guy here and I have my background with the moving phone, which I already tracked in Mocha earlier. So if I click on my bottom layer, and in effect controls, I could drop down my tracking data and you see the tracking data is still there. 
under layer export two, I'm gonna select my layer one, my monster layer. And if I hit apply export, you see it creates a pretty funky skewed version of what I want. The tracking's there, but it's not how I want it to look. So I'm gonna undo that. And if I under export option, I'm gonna change this to transform. And if I hit apply export, it's gonna keep the proportions of my comp and it's gonna just use the transform versus the scale and skew. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so I have my monster tracked with my phone pretty well. I do need to scale it down a little bit. So if you run into this issue, if I hit the U key, it'll, it'll show the keyframes that I have. This is from the Mocha tracking. So if I do scale it down, unfortunately, it's gonna mess with the scaling keyframes. But what I can do is if I go to the effects and presets, I could use the transform effect, and then I could just scale it down from there, and that's not gonna mess with any of these keyframes, which is good. So that looks pretty good. My phone is lined up pretty well. So now from here, I could hide my monster layer and I'm gonna go back to the key light effect and I'm gonna bring that onto my main layer. And I'm gonna use the screen color again and I'm gonna key out that green, go to my view and I'm gonna change that to screen mat as I did before. I'm gonna drop down the screen mat drop down, and I'm gonna play with my clip black and clip white until I get a solid black and white result. So with the crosshairs here, it's a little bit difficult, but what I can do is I could use the despot white to kind of bring that up and that looks pretty good. So let me go back to my view and final result and I'll bring my guy back up. Looks pretty good, it's tracked nice. If I wanna kind of be done, I could bring this down below and he's kind of already in the phone and you're good to go. But if I wanna add a little bit more 3D as you saw in the example, I could bring this back above and I could add some more fine tuning to it to make it look a little more authentic. So I'm gonna duplicate my bottom layer. I'll bring it to the top. And you see how kind of his palm comes over the phone a little bit? I'm gonna kind of try to bring that out to kind of accentuate the 3D a little bit more. So I'm gonna isolate that layer. And under effects and presets, I'm gonna grab the extract tool and I'm gonna bring the black point up. So it kind of just gets rid of most of the black. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna make sure that I just mask out his palm here. Then I'm gonna unsolo this layer. And again, making sure that my little monster guy is in the foreground. So if I bring up the mask path tool, I can keyframe that just very roughly. Luckily, there's not that much motion on it, but it's gonna look something like this. See how that just adds a little bit more depth to it. If I hit the F key, I could feather it, let's say about 10 pixels. That looks pretty good. Another thing I could do is I could grab my monster layer, I could duplicate it, I'll isolate it, and I'll add the drop shadow effect onto that duplicated layer. And under the effect controls, I'm gonna select shadow only. I'm gonna bring this underneath actually my main layer. I could label that shadow and I could adjust the direction, the distance and the softness. And of course the opacity. I'm gonna lose the phone part and I'm just gonna do the part where his horn and his hand kind of fall on the subject's hand. So again, I'm gonna mask that, isolate that by itself, hit the mask path tool and I'm actually gonna see if I track this mask, see how it does. All right, that did really well. I'll just track the rest of it. All right, and that looks really good. Again, I could change the distance. I can make it a little bit more, add more depth, a less depth. I think just adding a little bit like that definitely adds a subtle realness to it. Bringing it back here, I'm actually going to my mask path bring it down a little bit more and I'm just gonna do automatic tracker to that as well just so I can have everything looking uniform and tracked perfectly 
Okay, so now my mask path is perfectly tracked and you don't see my mask animating. I could actually adjust it a little bit. The expansion I could bring down. I could boost up the feather. And there you have it. So if you want to use this as a act one character, like I did in the intro, let me show you how to do that real quick. Here I have my performance clip, which I'll show you. Nothing makes VFX look cheaper than a bad screen replace. Now this is something you could simply just record on your phone, record on your computer. It's just basically getting the movements and the act that you need. And then down here, I went ahead and uploaded my green screen clip of my guy. And down here, facial expressiveness, if you want it to be more expressive, you bring, you bring it up. I'm kind of going to keep mine down at one or two. And then if you just had an image, then you could change this to gestures and then it's going to automatically add the gestures to it. But since this is a video, it's going to maintain the movements in the video and it's going to just add my mouth and expressions to it. So here's the result that it Nothing came up with. VFX look cheaper. Nothing makes VFX look cheaper than a bad screen replace. Nothing. And here's another one. I'm going to show you how to make this. Let's dive into it. So obviously the hand got a little messed up there. So just to, to solve that, you could just generate it again and hope for the best. You to make this. Let's dive into it. That one worked out pretty well. So there you have it. Create your own characters. Try it out for yourself. Let me know how it works. Thanks everyone for watching. And here's the final result.